Hey guys, welcome to my little corner. Thank you for watching, of course. So my name is Lala. I am a mom of four plus one, if you want to count the dog. And I am a nerd. I love coffee and I love stocks. So I think the next time I come up here, I'm going to have some coffee for you. I might do like a video first thing in the morning or something while I have my morning coffee just so you can see the steam and stuff. I don't know. I love that stuff. It's nothing like the first cup of coffee. Yes, I have two. So anyway, today I'm coming to you guys to talk about due diligence. Due diligence, what is that? So basically, it is learning about your stocks. Now, a lot of people, including myself, don't research their stocks, or I didn't used to research my stocks. And then I came across a very wise woman. Her name is Penny. And she really taught me about the importance of researching your stocks. So one thing that she said, and um, I'm not gonna go word for word because it's her saying, but she said that we will research our homes We'll research our next car. We research our kids' school. And when you do that, you don't just look it up and keep it moving, right? You look at reviews. You look at um, comparison, comparable places. You just you look at a bunch of different things when you're, you know, shopping, basically. So the same thing applies to stocks. When you are learning your stocks, you need to research them. So basically, I am coming to you now to show you how to do that because a lot of people don't know like how, what you do, what's the steps to, to look at a stock. Um, so I don't think that there's any set kind of way or anything. I think it's honestly what you may learn initially and then what you kind of tend to do, you know? So let me share my screen and I will go ahead and show you what I do when I research a stock. So first, let's go here to the Webull screener. Now, Black Girl Stocks, She taught me so much, so I gotta give her a shout out. Black Girl Stocks uh, just did a video about the Webull screener. So you can check her out, you know, go check that video out and you can still figure out how to set it up and things like that. But let me pause. Here's the screener. So we're gonna do the United States all uh, 1 billion to about, let's say 10 billion. So. Basically, small caps is anything under three billion. Mid cap is about three to, I think, 30 billion. And then large caps are 30 billion and above. So actually, I'm gonna change this to 30 billion just to give us a, a few more. All right, so then once you do that, you can add some filters. So I wanna do the sector. I want to do Basically, this filter is how you want to look at it. I want to look at volume. And that's about it right now. You can always go through all of these things and figure it out or watch her video and figure out, you know, like some of the things that she she did. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to just like get too deep into it. I just wanted to pick a stock. So I was showing you like how you can like find the stock, screen stock on Webull, look into it and then maybe jump on it. So, okay, so we have these matches here. They gave us 200 matches. So let's see, okay. None of these look familiar, but it is right now, it is sorted by price, the highest price. So let us sort it by volume. We want the highest volume, but it's not doing it. Okay, there it goes. All right, so the highest volume, and there we go. 
All right, so let's pick a stock. Let us look at, oh, Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's is on my long-term list and I haven't jumped into them yet, but that's a good one. So let's click on that. All right, so the first thing that I would do when I'm looking it up is I would look at the chart. Now, I would look at the chart firstly on a one month basis because Dave and Buster's has been around a long time. So you can see kind of how they've tracked over time. And as you can see, way back in 2017, they hit a high of $73.18. Came way down and then almost hit it again. So that's interesting. It's twice, it's almost got all the way up there. So, and then it had this sharp drop off around last year, Corona time. So, and then it's been going up ever since. So once I look at it on a one month chart, I will look at the one hour chart, which gives me more of a midterm. The, the one month is long term. The one hour is more midterm. So as you can see, it goes back for, to like, you know, like the last month or so. I'll, sp I'll zoom all the way out just so I can see, you know, kind of how it's been doing for the last few months. And since December, it looks like it's gone up. Look, it's just steadily going up. It's creating higher highs and lower lows. Black Girl Stocks again. Yes. So now once I've looked there, I also, this isn't here, but I also like to look here at the stats that they have. For instance, I like to see, you know, what the PE ratio is. It's negative. Oh, that's not good. Oh. I like to look at the 52 week low, which is 843 and the 52 week high, which is 5173, meaning that it hasn't gotten back up to that $70 range that it was at before. So, hmm. but anyway, um, I also look at the market cap It's 2 billion. The volume, this was on the last trading day. It was 3 million, so that's pretty good. The average volume here is 1.75 million. So that's that's pretty decent. Um, because of Black Girl Stocks, I have this 1 million thing in my head. Of course, she just, in her last video, just said 500K is okay. And it is. Like, I've had a couple of stocks that's been under a million, and they don't move as fast, but... They just, they do move, you know, it's just not constant like you would see in the stocks that have like a million, 300 million, where you can actually see the bars. Like it'll be more gaps and things like that, but it has the volume. It's just not a lot. So, yeah. So, um, and then I think that's it that I look for here. But one thing I do like to do, um, another group that I watch is Earn Your Leisure. And one thing that he said that really stood out to me was look at the 52 week high and then multiply that by 25%. That's when you should get in. So I don't think that always applies because sometimes things set new highs, like the SPY right now just hit 400. So it's possible, you know, that's the 52 week high, but that doesn't mean that it's not gonna go back. It's not gonna continue to go up because it is on the uptrend. And we can look at that, but I won't today. So yeah, so I look at that. And then another thing I like to do, I like to look at the options just because sometimes I really just like to play the options instead of the stock, especially if it's a $45 stock. I'd rather get the options and, you know, work on that. So I would look at that probably calls unless I thought it was going to go down, then I would look at puts. And then I would just look and see, you know, kind of what they have. I like to look a little further out. So let's see, May 7th, I would look and see, okay, so I do not like the way this is set up and it's, I don't understand why it's like that. So let's add some things here. We're going to add volume, break even and the money. Yeah, but then we're gonna drag this up here. This up here, I don't need the mid. 
So I'm about to ask the last break even percent change. Yep, that's about all the stuff I look at. Open interest. Yep. Just make sure. Okay. All right. So, yes. So I would look here and let's see. This is for May. So I like to do in the money calls. The price is 45.31. So I would look. Let's break even around. This looks weird. And I'm not sure why. Oh, because it's ascending. Okay. I'm tripping. This is because it's it's not on my regular desktop thing, so it's it looks a little weird, but it's going this way as far as going up. So yeah, before price is 45, I would be looking like right here for this. Um no open interest. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so I don't know about the options for that. Or at least for that date anyway. But Later for that, because, you know, options is a whole nother thing. So let's go to Google. And y'all can see that I was like trying to do some TikTok stuff. I, I don't know nothing about TikTok. My daughter knows more about TikTok than I do. So there's that. Okay, so we were looking at Dave and Buster's, right? And it was play. So we will do play stock forecast. It's the Google for me. I love Google. Google does everything. Google has everything. You got a question? Google it. I don't know. Google it. There's a meme for that. I'm going to insert that. I love that, Google, that, that meme. I love it. So anyway, you would Google. That's the first thing you would do. Google XXX stock forecast, right? So you would Google that and let's see. What is going on here? Okay. So you would Google that, and as you can see, it comes up. The first thing will give you, usually it does give you a price target. And so this is saying that they have a medium of $49.50 with a high estimate of $57 and a low of $36. Well, we know right now that the price is $45.36. So that means that it has a little upside left, but not that much. So you can look at that. Money stock CNN, I don't know. I don't really look at those. I like to look at... Yahoo Finance. That's usually the first place that I go is Yahoo Finance. Who shall I read? And what I like to do, one thing I like to do is to look at chart events because they'll tell you right here that they see a bearish pattern, that the price crossed the moving average and it crossed in a way that it was going down. So they are saying that it's going down, which means that hmm, puts maybe? So you have short term and midterm. They're both saying that it's going to go down. Long term, it may go up. And honestly, this may be because, you know, Dave and Buster's had to deal with COVID issues. I don't know about you, but who's going to Dave and Buster's and playing games behind other folks and where they have to wipe down all the games and crevices and yeah. I mean, people are probably still going, but not me. And I'm pretty sure a lot, they've lost a lot of business. So that kind of makes sense that why they may be, why they may be struggling right now. So, okay, so let's see here. What I also like to do is look at their stats here. You know, um, the same thing kind of things we were looking at on Weeble. I just like to look at it on Weeble because I like to look at the charts on there. I mean, you can look at the chart here, as you can see. You know, you can look on a five year. You see, in five years, it's gone up. In the last year, it's actually increased. Six months, one month, five days, and one day. So basically, it was going up. And then, I guess during this last little correction, it it's just been suffering and not really recovering. So I also like to look at earnings because earnings affects the stock. We could talk about that on another video, but it does affect the stock. So, you know, looking at earnings or when their next earnings report will come does help. And the one year target estimate. So, you know, people think, well, analysts who you can't always believe will say that it'll get to about $47, meaning that it's not going to go up much from where it is. So, but we want to see if it will. That's the whole purpose of doing research. So this video may be a little long because, you know, we're researching. 
and I'm actually going to try to do it quickly so y'all can just get the gist of it, but you really should do the extra research. So like for instance, once you go down here, you have you know news that you can read, press releases, you can read research reports, those type of things. And basically like for this, you would want to read this. Or well, no, this is a call transcript. We're not going to look at that right now. Or we're not going to listen to that. Okay, so, but look at this headline. Dave and Buster's rang up less than one third the revenue in 2020 compared with prior year. Whoa. Whoa. So that that is shocking. That means that COVID has really, really hurt that stock. So there actually would be a couple ways that you could play that. Um, upon further research, of course, you can do a put and, you know, just think you think that the stock is going to continue to go down, do a put, or you can take this as a long term recovery play. Long term, as in like maybe next year, it might pop back off. Yeah. So, all right. So we're going to continue to look a little more. And it looks like it's the, some of the same things. Okay, so they had a quarter four loss, but they topped their revenue estimate. So, hmm. So, but people thought that apparently that their sales were going to suck. And they didn't. They lost money, but they still had more sales than people thought. So, yes. So you would, you know, just read some of these news articles. It's good to learn things that have happened with it, like this here. Exploration of shareholder rights plan. What is that? So let's see. Dave and Buster's today announced that a shareholder rights plan originally adopted in March 2020 has expired in accordance with its terms on March 17th, 2021. So there's something about the like okay okay so that that has nothing to do with the stock basically but yeah I still wanted to look into that so let's see all right mm-hmm we're looking All right, so that is not telling me. That seems like it's going off of Dave and Buster. So let's go back to the top here. Okay, so there's more besides this tab, of course. Um, that I think you have to pay for. So let's start down here. Sometimes these tabs don't have anything, but I like to look at all of them anyway. But especially this holders thing. Y'all, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I watch a lot of YouTubers, and so I... I'm going to shout them out, especially if they have, you know, if they, they talk about good things, you know, and I also, I don't bite. So I'm going to give credit where credit is due. King and Grace says, you got to see what the big boys are doing. So it's good to see who holds what or how much is held by what. So as you can see, you know, how many are held by insiders that's a lot of shares held by institutions. Good gracious. 261 institutions holding shares. And here are the top institutional holders. BlackRock, Vanguard, Hillpath, Morgan Stanley, like a lot of big guys have these, have this stock. So, and they didn't sell. So they may, you know, they, they know something. All right, so, and then here you can see where if you didn't, if you couldn't afford the stock by itself, where you can go to an ETF and the stock is in the ETF. So like here are the mutual fund holders, the mutual funds that have it. Let's see, let's search that. iShares, can I copy this? Yes. Nope, you didn't copy the whole thing. Okay, let's do it like this. Copy it, and then we're going to look it up. Okay. I was about to say, like, can I just get a whole new page, please? I didn't even want it to take me out of my page. Okay. So, look. 
I can do this and see about, oh, yeah, this is new to me. Investor.vanguard.com. You can see what they are in. Hmm. All right. So, um, let's see. I have never done this website. So, this is going to show me. Nope. It's not going to show me. Hmm. I thought it was going to show me what was in here, but apparently it's not. Oh, there it is. Duh. And it was on the first page. I just had to click all over the place like my daughter. All right. Top largest holdings, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, blah, 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 blah. It's top 10. Okay. Where's Dave and Buster's on here? Hmm. Huh. So maybe it's not. What is that? VTSMX. And that's this is how we can check it. VTSMX. VTSMX. Where is the chart? Okay. Well, anyway. Hmm. Okay, that's not working. Let's try something else. Let's try this one. Sorry, y'all, this video is gonna be kind of long because again, research, it takes some time. So let's see, can we see here who is in it? There we go. All right, small cap ETF. You got GameStop, and I still oh, it was 60, 689. Let's see if we can just search here. Um, play. Boom, there you go. So, yes, it is only, looks like 0.21 or 21%. 21%, no, that has to be 2%. Yeah, 2% of this ETF, the iShares Core Small Cap ETF. So if you wanted to do that, you know, instead of investing into the company, you could do that. All right, so let's see. Hmm. You can look at options. And here it'll give you, you know, like kind of what they have, all the information that you want to see. And then, of course, my favorite is the analysis tab. So... Here you can see the company earnings and you can compare them to last quarter, last year, blah, blah, blah. It was expected for the next, the new year. Um, and what I like to look at is I like to look at the sales growth. I like to look at um, growth estimates and earnings per share. So just seeing that, you know, they have positive numbers or see that they are profitable um, that actually helps. Of course, we already know that they're not profitable because they have, um, I'm sorry, that, that profitable part was the, for the financials tab. This is just the earnings estimate. But yes, you like to see that they're profitable just because you're, you want to invest in profitable companies or ones that can turn a profit soon. But as you can see, you know, basically they've, they've been struggling here. You know, this is all, it's negative operating income. See, they were positive. And then, yeah, that's interesting that this was, this was before. Oh, no, no, no. This is 2021. So, yeah. So, yeah, we can see that they just, sheesh. Ooh, yeesh. The operating expenses is what killed them because they had to shut down. And so that hurt them a lot. Yeah, so I just I like to click through all of these. Just you know, you want to see what kind of sector it is. Let's just consider consumer cyclical. Cyclical. Okay, but you can see the employees where they're located at, that type of thing. Um, all the the good goodies there. Historically, how they've done. You know how the stock has done although you could still see that on the charts 
the statistics, of course, um, what they're valued at, what they used to be valued at. And as you can see, you know, they used to be a billion dollars and then they dropped and now it's going back up. So it seems like it's recovering. You can look at the financial highlights. They're not profitable. Their operation, mar operating margin is horrible. Um, so yeah. Oh, they're struggling. Mm -hmm. But yes, so you can look at all of this. Read through it. Understand it. If you don't understand it, Google it. All right, so... And then I think this will give you, yeah. So if you wanted to like do a more in-depth charting analysis, you can do that on Yahoo. So, okay. All right, we got to go all the way back because, you know. Yeah. So after I do um, Yahoo, I would do, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Market Watch. Market Watch is my second one. I love them. No, thank you. All right, so again, it's the same thing, but there may be data here that you just didn't see in Yahoo. You know, like I actually probably missed that on the other one, but the analyst ratings, I do look at that, although I take it with a grain of salt, um, but the average analyst, 12 of them rated it as a whole. And click on that and get a little bit more detailed about you know what what it is of course it's also on this on this tab but the average recommendation is to hold mostly because probably this is a recovery play it may not recover until next year but it'll still recover so it's a long-term hold it seems like that's what i'm gauging from the research that i'm doing and that you know it could hit 71 again it hit it before you know it just it will really depend on how it recovers from here. So, sorry, my thing is just not, I'm gonna have to pull my chair up. Maybe if I do that. Oh yeah, oh, oh. Yes, there we go. Okay, so. Okay, so yes, we see the analyst. This is not giving me, oh, there it is. All right, so they all say hold. They've up, maintained that hold rating recently and usually they will give you a price target did we say that already yes we did it said their their average price target was 57 dollars. so you can look at that um of course you know just want to see if their financials kind of say the same thing and this is hello i want to get mm, I do this to see recent. Yeah, so this will also give you a five-year trend, you know? Like their sales revenue has been going up, but the growth has been going down, you know? Cost of goods, mm, slightly up. Their gross profit margin sucked up until last year. Of course, this probably, research and development probably doesn't apply. Um, but yeah, you can basically look at those things to see how they've trended over time. I like that because that way you don't have to look at numbers and say, okay, well, is this greater than last year or less than or blah, blah, blah. So um, yes, so you can do that. You can look at their balance sheet. Can I click on it? Yeah, there we go. And, oh, there it goes. Yeah, you can look at the balance sheet, the cash flow, and SEC filings. Now, SEC filings is really good for, I guess, seeing if they have reported anything to the SEC. You know, it may be something new that they're doing um, for pharmaceutical companies. It could be like applying for FDA approval, that type of thing. So sometimes you kind of do want to see what they have said, like, what is this one? This one, this one, it looks like large accelerated filer. Oh, 
Oh, this is an annual report. Okay. Okay, so that's the annual report. But well, it said that right there. <laughs> Special events. And then institutional ownership basically shows you, you know, who owns it. So you can see that, you know, because they file basically when they, when institutions, large institutions buy them, they file with the SEC that, you know, this person bought this. So, yeah. So then here's the profile and things like that. Kind of similar to Yahoo Finance. So as you can see, you know, it, it's kind of similar. It's just you may prefer that versus something else. Um, and so there are other things you can look at. One thing I do look at is stock invest. Now, stock invest, take them with a grain of salt because, you know, they're not all. I've actually watched them or read things and then they were wrong when they say like here, here up here it says whether or not to buy. But just like the other analysts, they rank this as a hold candidate. So then if you go down, you can kind of read what the price action has been in the last day and then to kind of see, you know, what it may or may not do. This one even says, given the short term, given the short term trend, the stock is expected to rise 56% during the next three months and with a 90% probability hold a price between $69 and $78 at the end of this three month period. So that's basically going off of technical analysis. I think that this is kind of automated, but once, you know, COVID is not as much of a factor, I really do think that people will start going back out to Dave and Buster's and they, you know, they may be able to hit that price. So, you know, you would look into that a little bit more. It was one other one. Oh, tip ranks. Tip ranks you have to pay for, but they're good as far as, oh, let me see what the analysts say. What do they say? They say it's a moderate buy, which means it's basically a hold. <laughs> or if you should, I mean, they don't necessarily say buy now, buy this now, probably because it's trending downwards. So you could probably get a better price on this. But they don't say to sell it. So it's still a decent stock. But I do like looking on looking at that because you also want to get, you know, just different price, I wouldn't say targets, but price analysts just to make your own decisions. Yeah. So, and then another thing I do that, you know, I don't never necessarily recommend this for like concrete evidence, but Part of, let me tell y'all something. That's another thing that Penny told me. Part of the stock market is psychology. And understanding how people feel about a stock is it's important. You, you do want to know that because if they don't feel good about a stock, they're going to sell it. Or they may short it. And, you know, this is going down right now. So I could definitely believe that people would be shorting it because they'll say, okay, well, they're not making any money. They're not going to make any money for a while. So let's short this, you know. So I like to go to Stock Twits. Stock Twits is the Twitter for stocks. It's it's cool to me because, you know, sometimes, especially on Webull, a stock will just take off out of nowhere. And then you look at the news, it's not there. You try to Google the news, you can't find it. And then if you go to either the Weibo comments or stock twits, you might find that someone has posted it there first before the news has gotten a chance to post it or whatever. So you can find information there. But I like to look at who is watching this. How many people are watching it? You know, who is talking about it? How many people is talking about it? How do they feel about it? Sentiment is down. People are like, I'm not going to Dave and Buster's not with Corona. And then what's up with the price? The price is down. Then also look at this, boom, down. So then you have the key data here that I give you. And then you can basically like kind of just read the, ooh, people are not talking. Okay, yeah, read some of the comments. Take them with a grain of salt. Take the comments with a grain of salt. Please, please. Please do not run off of comments, off of Weeble or StockTwits. Whatever you see, go verify it yourself. Don't go in StockTwits and somebody's talking about how they just got a new 
$180 price target and then you just go and buy some more because they said that. Uh-uh. No, child. No. Bye. Go do your own research. Okay? All right. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I like to look at that. Let's look at something different. This play is like, yeah. Let's look at AMC because AMC is like the high, one of the hottest stocks right now. And I had posted a video because this like is one of the ones that people are always talking about. Although, look at that. The message volume is down. The price is down. The sentiment is down. So, you know, you can kind of see what people, how people feel about something. You know, these are a lot of retail investors posting here and things that they're saying, stuff like that. Let's look at GameStop. And the sentiment for that is up. So people are feeling better about that. Probably because of their recent news. I think they just had news. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was good. So, yes. Yeah, so I would look at this. What's this? So, oh, this is, oh, this is, uh, that's one thing you do have to realize, um, well, notice. Weeble does this too, but basically, sometimes they, people will come on one ticker's post or page and post other tickers to get people to come and buy their stuff. So, sometimes that's good when you have sympathy plays. Sympathy plays are um, certain stocks that run because of other stocks. Uh, so you might be able to see, you know, something else that's running while this one stock is running. But for the most part, that's just something you really shouldn't pay attention to, you know. But and this is not something that you should count in as, you know, solid, solid research. This is really just understanding what people are saying, how people are feeling, the psychology of it. You know, the psychology works a lot differently than this. Well, not differently than this. It, the psychology is more than this, let me say. But this does play a part. And it's really good to, you know, do that. Now, also, there are some people on here. I just saw it. There it comes. Mr. M. I like this guy. Because although he's a day trader, he still posts lots of information that, you know, he, he, especially on the weekends, because, you know, weekends is for due diligence and research, which is why I'm doing this video. Uh, but he just, you know, look at all of this. He gives you biotech news. He gives you talk, you know, stock talk, things with, you know, that's going on with taxes and the economy and, you know, what's going on with the markets. It's just a lot of things that he gives that you know, could benefit. So that's one of the things why I like stock twits. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't want to call that like a research site. That is a sentiment site. It's a psychology site. It's a site to understand what people are saying. And then you also might come across some really good gems like this guy and, you know, get good calls and also great information. So one of his things that he shares that I like a lot. And I said I was going to just subscribe to them. It's Talk Markets. Talk Markets is just, I don't know, it's really good because they just talk about a lot of different things. Um, and it's, it's just so much information on here. So, boy, uh, I was about to say boycott. And that's just not, come on, la. Bookmark. Ding. Bookmark. <laughs> This one, talkmarkets.com. And, you know, even here you can search tickers. Let's see. Let's do Dave and & Buster's and search that ticker. And then you can do that on here as well. Look up stuff about them. Now, it's not a whole bunch, as much information, but this is, this will give you at least more information, not more information, more other stock talk that you can do. Um, another thing you can do, let's just go back to Google. Another thing you can do, um, if, if you just, 
without the forecast, if you just do play stock, this finance channel will tab will come up and you can look at Google Finance. So, you know, you can see some of the same things. It's always good to look at different places to see that, you know, because you can't go off of one place. You really can't. And that's why, you know, when you comparison shop, that's what you do. You comparison shop and, you know, you read reviews. That's stock twits, y'all. That's the reviews. But you read reviews and that type of thing. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, I think that's about it for this video. That's what I normally do when I'm doing research. Um, I Google. I look at stock twits. And then I also, I'm a part of Facebook groups and Discord groups. And sometimes I actually go in there and see if they're talking about it or if they have posted any information about it. Um, I also, if I think of anything else, I will come back to the video and maybe add it to the end. Some type of, I don't know, note or something. I will put that up at the end. Um, a little note that, that lists the websites that I went to. But that's it for today's video, guys. I really thank you for watching with me. I know it was long and I'm sorry. <laughs> but research really should take you a while. Um, sometimes stocks aren't as easy as the Dave and Buster's one. And like I've seen ones where they were high, like the 78. And in September, they just plummeted and that will send you on a whole quest okay well what happened what happened back in september to make the stock go from 78 to 14 if you didn't see what happened with just viacom recently you would be like okay why did that stock fall off a cliff and it would send you to research to find out because that could be a bad signal that could be a bad sign that something's wrong so you definitely want to look at you know the Make sure you look at the chart. Make sure you Google. Make sure you find out the sentiment on the stock before you make that decision. And then make your plan. Make a plan. Make your entry plan. Make your exit plan if you is one, if you have one. Decide how you're going to trade the stock. Are you going to day trade it? Are you going to swing trade it? Is it going to be long term for you? You have to figure those things out before you get into it. Write it down. Write it down. If you don't want to write it down, if you're like, I'm not a writing person, Excel. You can do an Excel spreadsheet. You can do it on Notepad, on your phone, if you feel like texting, whatever you need to do. But you need to write it down. And that way, you know, like when, once you research Dave & Buster, you can say, okay, well, my price targets, I know it hit 78. And, you know, I, but the research I did, they mostly said 57, but I think it'll get past that. So I am going to say, 62 and when the price reaches 62 you're out of that stock you're out so just make that plan and then execute your plan so again i'm sorry i went off on a tangent again y'all but I, I get really excited about this stuff please 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 if you haven't already like thumbs up thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed if you thumbs up for me, that helps the channel. That helps more people see me so that I can grow. I really appreciate that. And also hit the notification bell so that, you know, you'll know about my new videos. And also, if you don't have Webull, there's a link in the description. You can get a couple free stocks with a $100 deposit. If you're on Robinhood, I would say get out of Robinhood. If you haven't started yet, don't go to Robinhood. Robinhood is very easy for beginners, but just mm -mm, mm -mm. Webull, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity. Those are my top three recommendations. But anyway, it was great talking to you guys. And thanks again so much for watching. Bye.